Hi, I'm Paul from DIY Automate. And today we're gonna to start talking about getting your home automation systems onto the internet. And the first thing we wanna to do to do that is to get you a permanent presence, a name, an address on the internet. And to do that, we're gonna use a service called Dynamic DNS. Specifically with us, DuckDNS. So uh, let's go try that. So first things first, I'm releasing two videos at the same time. This one, configuring dynamic DNS, which I'll explain in a second, and another one about SSL certs and some security related issues, which you can find here, right? Somewhere, I'll get it there. Anyway, so you can configure dynamic DNS and open up your server to the world and that would be great, but I really do think that there's some really important security security concerns that you need to take into account. So I'm releasing them at the same time and I think that they should be watched as a pair and you should really understand both concepts, okay? Okay, so let's talk about dynamic DNS for just two minutes, just a little bit of theory, right? So what is dynamic DNS? I wanna make sure you understand that. And here it is. Inside of your house, you have a router. And that router was given to you or you bought it by the cable company, your ISP, you know, your, your internet service provider. Um, and that is the DMARC between your house and the internet. Everything on your home's side of that, that router is in your private IP space, most likely 192.168.0. something. But it can be anything, as long as you don't put it out on the internet. And the reason for that is everything on the internet has to be unique and you can't know who else is using what. So, and if everybody had every device they had in the world on the internet, those addresses would be gone. They sort of are gone, but that's a different story. Um, so, so on that one side of the router, that's what you have. On the other side of the router, you have an address, an IP address that uniquely identifies you on the internet given to you by your service provider. And that can be anything, 64.92.13.7 or any other combination of numbers, just about. Uh, your internet service provider gives you that, but also when they do, they do not guarantee to give you the same address day in and day out. That address can change at any time. And that's important, right? Because if you want to get to your home automation systems, you have to know what that address is. Um, and to top it all off, it would be much easier if you could get to that address by remembering a name. And that's what DNS is, right? So DNS is the name dynamic uh, domain name server, right? And it's a, it's a server that, that is basically a list of those IP addresses and your name, right? And, um, and, the dynamic DNS, which is what we're gonna talk about, is a server specially designed to handle that dynamic IP or that IP changing all the time. And that's what DuckDNS, which we're gonna to use today, does. And there's other services out there. Your router may have some built-in services, but DuckDNS is free. It's you know readily available. It is seems to be fairly secure and the uptime on it has been very good. So we're gonna use that. And also it's just recommended by a bunch of people, including the Home Assistant people. So. I feel that's a that's a good recommendation. So we're we're going to use that and move forward, right? So what you need to do now is think about a name that you want to use, and that name is going to be something .duckdns.org. I'm going to use test diy automate .duckdns.org, but you can use anything as long as somebody else hasn't already used it, and it can only be letters and numbers, lowercase letters, no dots or special characters, uh, but that's that's it, right? If you can have that in mind, this is gonna take us about five minutes to set up. Um, and then I'll show you a couple of ways to test it. The other thing, once after we set it up, because your address changes all the time, you need a way to tell DuckDNS my address changed. So we're gonna create what's called a cron job or a scheduled task within your Raspberry Pi that every five minutes tells DuckDNS, here's my IP address, here's my IP address, here's my IP address, uh, every five minutes. And that's gonna be a good thing because the most you could ever be out of sync with what is your ISP gave you and what is in DuckDNS is five minutes. And the chances of that happening are fairly small that it'd take you the whole five minutes. Okay, so 
I hope that made sense. If it didn't, ask questions below and I will do my best to answer them. Uh, but for now, let's go to DuckDNS and the DuckDNS website and walk through this. So go on over to DuckDNS.org, you'll get this page. A few things I wanna go over really quickly. First is you can install DuckDNS on any computer or server in your network. It doesn't have to be the server or, or the computer that you want to expose to the internet eventually, right? So in order to do that, um, there's a whole bunch of different installation instructions here. Um, you can go to the Windows instructions, you can go Raspberry Pi, you can uh, OS X, whatever. We're gonna use the Linux cron um, directions mostly. Uh, I changed them just a little bit, but we're gonna use cron tab instead of cron. But um, And all cron is, is cron is a, is a system scheduler. So it'll schedule things to run and we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, and cron tab is just a way for you to um, set up cron jobs under your account. Okay, so in the Raspberry Pi or, or um, Linux operating system. So that's number one. Number two is you're gonna have to log in and create an account. And it's super easy with DuckDNS. You can see all the providers up top, Google, Reddit, Facebook, Twitter, Persona. Pick any of those. It's probably gonna ask you to authorize your provider. I've already been in, so it's, I'm already authorized, but it, it, it'll probably ask you to authorize your provider. First thing you'll see here is um, your account type and your email address and all that other stuff. And um, a token. This token is fairly important because the token is the thing that that authenticates you to DuckDNS when you're doing things like auto updating through scripts. So, so look at it as a username and password that you use in a script, in, in our case, in our cron job that we're gonna set up in a minute, okay? Uh, and then the next thing you need to see is the subdomain, right? The subdomain is the name that you're gonna use that I said, you know, to think of. Um, so before we go ahead and create that, let's do a little test. So you can see how to sort of troubleshoot and walk through some of this stuff um, as we go. Um, we're gonna go ahead and, and come on to our Raspberry Pis, whatever you have. The first thing you're probably gonna wanna do if you haven't already done it for something else is install the DNS utilities, right? So sudo app-get space install space DNS utils and it's gonna install a bunch of utilities. We're only gonna use one, but there, there's a bunch of useful ones in there. Hit enter, it's gonna go through, it only takes a minute. I already had it here, so it was already installed, but it'll take you about a minute more than that, okay? We are going to use a DNS utility called NSLOOKUP, right? So name server lookup. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna ask the internet, hey, what IP address goes to this name. So you put in the name that you're going to use. In my case, it's gonna be test DIY automate.duckdns.org. And it's gonna come back and say, it can't find it. We haven't created it yet. That's a good thing, okay? So right now, that's how we want it. We know how now to do the test. And I just wanted that for comparison purposes. So we're gonna get rid of that for a moment and go ahead and create or type in your subdomain for me, it's test DIY automate and then dot duck dot duck DNS dot org are already there. You don't need to add those and then hit add domain. It'll take it a second. If nobody's already using it, uh, if everything's going well, it'll say success. And now you have um, a domain with your current IP address, right? So it is getting automatically because it knows because you're going to it what your address is. So it pre-populates that for you. You don't have to do anything. If your IP address never changed, you're up and going, you never have to do anything ever again. Um, but we're gonna assume that our, our IP address might change. So now that we've created that, let's go do the exact same test. nslookup your domain dot duckdns.org. When you do that, it's gonna take it a second and it's gonna come back and say, hey, yeah, that exists and here's the IP address. The IP address here should map to or be the same as the IP address on the DuckDNS website. If all that's great, we're good, DuckDNS is set up, we don't have to do anything else on the DuckDNS website. Now what we have to do is go ahead and create a script and a cron job. The script is gonna be the thing that actually updates DuckDNS and the cron job is gonna be a thing that runs that script on a schedule, in our case, every five minutes. And that means there's, the, at most, DuckDNS and your IP address can be five minutes out of date from each other. Okay, so let's go and 
and do that. And to do that, we're going to um, create a, a directory within your home drive to hold the script. So the first thing you need to do is be in your home drive, right? So if you're not sure if you're there, CD and the little tilde, will make sure that you're in your home drive. If you just logged in, you're automatically in your home drive, not a problem. Um, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna create a directory. So MD, um, MKDIR, and then we're gonna call it duck DNS. And then we're gonna move into that directory. So CD duck DNS. And there shouldn't be anything in that directory. LS will tell you, list will tell you there's nothing in there because we just created it. And now we're gonna create a file to put a command in, right? So we're gonna call the file um, duck.sh. So nano or whatever editor you wanna use and then duck.sh and should open a blank file that doesn't have anything in it. And we are going to now copy a command into there. The command is below in the notes of this video. It's on diyautomate.me if you're not there, if you're on YouTube or whatever. Um, and um, and you can find it in the install notes of the DuckDNS that I showed you, which shows you all the install pieces. So go ahead and, t and put this command in from below. Um, and a couple things you wanna see, it's a long command, so it looked like I only pasted a little bit at first, but if you go back, it shows you the whole thing. There's two things here. There's one is the, the domain, right? So domains and then equals example domain here. You're gonna put your domain name that you came up with dot duckdns.org there. And then right after that, you can see token and then a long token, right? And that's just an example token. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put the token for your account that you got off the website before, right? So go ahead and, well, let's do the token first. Go ahead and delete out the token and make sure that the ampers, you're on the ampersand, right? So the ampersand ends up on the right of the token and the equal sign on the left. Go ahead and grab your token. I'm copying mine out and come back and paste it in, right? So that my token's there. You can see the, the ampersand is on the right, the equal sign is on the left, and we're gonna go do the same thing for the domain. So delete out the example domain and put in yours. So mine is test DIY automate dot duck DNS dot org, okay? So that's it, control X to save it, yes, enter. That's it, we have, now we have a script. The last thing we need to do is go ahead and change the permissions on the script um, so that it is executable. So we're gonna chmod, um, change mode to 700, which is execute and then duck.sh. That is now executable, we're all good. Um, the last thing we need to do now is add it to cron, right? To our um, installer or our scheduler. So Raspberry Pis have something called cron tab, and that is the easiest way to do it. Cron tab is sort of a personal scheduler and um, or personal list that cron, the service, will use to run your, your um, commands. The important thing is it will run under the user's context. So it will actually run as you, which is what we want because we want it to run out of your home directory, okay? So cron tab dash E, cron tab dash edit, that's what the E is. Go to the bottom of that, that file and we're gonna type in a um, fairly easy command here. Um, uh, we're gonna go ahead and paste in the line. Again, that's in the notes below on diyautomate.me, um, the post for this on that site um, or on the duck DNS install site. And all we're doing here is, this should look fairly familiar. Um, we are setting up something to run every five minutes. So this first piece here is every, it's the minutes. So every five minutes, we could do it once an hour by putting a one there. We could do it um, once a day, once a month, day of week. Um, those are your sort of your choices, but every five minutes is, is fairly reasonable. Um, this is the script, so remember, the tilde there is home drive, so it's gonna run under your context, so that's great. Um, and then duckdns is the folder we created, duck.sh is the file we created, and then this little bit at the end is just saying create a log file for us and put it in the same folder, okay? Easy enough, uh, go ahead and save that, control X, Y, enter. And now we have 
the new cron job there. Um, and now we're done. We can walk away. But I'm gonna, I wanna just take a second to show you how to sort of test that things are, things are okay, right? So the first thing you can do to test if it's okay is dot slash duck dot sh. Run that script by hand, hit enter. It takes it a second. And now you'll see it has created a log file, duck.log, right? So go ahead into that, that log file, or you can just cat it. So cat duck.log, tail, whatever you want to use. And you can see over here, it says, okay. If it didn't work, it would have said KO. So okay means it got a positive response from duck, duck DNS org. okay? That's great. The other thing you can do is if you want to make sure it's running every five minutes, you just wait the five minutes um, and then do an ls.ll. And that will list, but it will also list on the last time the file was modified. So you can just make sure that that's incrementing and that the file is modified correctly. Okay? So that's it. That is DuckDNS in a nutshell. Again, this just gets us to the point where we can get to your router. The next video, I'm going to show you how to open a port in the router, um, configure it with security certificates, configure it, um, some lockouts if people you know, try to log in with a bad password every so many times, um, and things like that in a home assistant context. I'll come back and do one not in a home assistant context, but I think for now, um, in the home assistant context will be great. Uh, if you have questions below, just type them up uh, or put them in my blog and I will see them there. Uh, and subscribe, tell your mother, tell your friends, sing it at the top of a hill, I don't know. Um, and I will see you next time. Okay, thank you very much and keep automating. Bye.